Hello viewers, today we shall talk about the various uses of prisms in ophthalmology. This can be broadly classified into two categories. The diagnostic uses include their use in various instruments like keratometers, applanation tonometers, gonioscopes and ophthalmoscopes among others. The other diagnostic uses are the prism and alternate cover test, simultaneous prism cover test. It is to be noted here that while measuring strabismus through glasses that the deviation can be overestimated in minus lens use and underestimated in plus lens use such an effect being produced when the glass powers are greater than 5 diopters regardless of the type of deviation. The Krimsky tests, the 4 prism diopter base out test, measurement of vergences and fusional amplitudes, prism adaptation test, determination of fixation preference in pre-verbal children, medox rod test, red glass test, Bagolini glasses test, worth 4 dot test, prism dissociation test, and induced tropia test. While a uh, description of each of these is outside the scope of today's video, I shall discuss the pr prism adaptation test alone. Some surgeons use the prism adaptation test to determine the maximum deviation prior to surgery in comitant, comitant deviations. In some persons, a pre-operative prism wear of 30 to 45 minutes may result in an increase in the deviation. This is called eating up of prisms. Uh, an increase in prism power is required to determine the maximum deviation in such cases as surgical correction has to be based on the maximum deviation to avoid undercorrection. The therapeutic uses are many. We shall briefly discuss each of them. The binocular vision disorders in which prisms may be used are phorias, tropias and virgins anomalies. Prisms are not the first choice of treatment in phorias. They may be tried if refractive correction and orthoptic exercises do not work in patients with decompensated phorias and in elderly and poorly motivated persons. The base of the prism is directed away from the direction of deviation, that is, apex is towards the deviation. The least amount of prism that eliminates symptoms should be used. Prism use in committed tropias is less common and can be used for correction only if there is no suppression or anomalous retinal correspondence. Here again, the base is directed away from the direction of deviation. They often involve older pediatric or adult patients with new onset or decompensated strabismus. The main indications would be cases of acute acquired committed esotropia with small deviations, failed orthoptics as an alternative to surgical correction, residual deviation following surgical correction, surgically overcorrected tropias, to reinforce binocular vision in young children prior to surgery if it is delayed, diplopia due to decompensated child, childhood strabismus or skew deviation, and cosmetic. Cosmetic indications involve the use of an inverse prism, that is, the base is directed towards the size of the deviation in patients with a moderate tropia and poor visual prognosis for binocular vision or unwillingness for surgery. An inverse prism causes the eye behind the prism to appear deviated towards the apex to an observer, approximately 1 mm for every 8 prism diopters. Patients having a constant unilateral strabismus with associated severe amblyopia or deep suppression and those with good visual acuity but with anomalous correspondence are the best candidates for this type of prism. Coming to the incompetent tropia, some of the common conditions where prisms may be used to relieve diplopia are in cranial nerve palsies causing extraocular muscle palsies. Since the vertical fusion amplitudes are low, uh, undercorrection as is done with horizontal diplopia should be minimal when using prisms in vertical diplopias, in ex that is uh, fourth nerve palsy. In extraocular muscle palsies, the prisms are usually placed in front of the affected eye. However, some people place them in front of the normal eye to prevent secondary contracture of the ipsilateral antagonist. The other uses are thyroid eye disease, blowout fracture, 
Yoked prisms may sometimes be used in incompetent strabismus with an abnormal head posture such as type 1 duality. Coming to virgin's anomalies, base out prisms to force fusional convergence may be used in orthoptic exercise in children and base in prisms to relieve the asthenopia due to convergence insufficiency that manifests in early presbyopes. Base out prisms may be used in divergence insufficiency if exercises are ineffective or not possible. Coming to other uses. This is a right homonymous hemianopia as seen by the patient. Prisms may be used several ways. Yoked prisms may be used with the base towards the hemianopic side, in this case the right side. This allows the field to be shifted a little so that there is a little more of the right field seen. However, there is no field expansion. Alternately, yoked sector prisms where the prism is present only on one half of the glasses may be used. This also produces a similar effect but an apical scotoma can hamper vision in some fields. A unilateral sector prism may be helpful in that there is no ap apical scotoma but central diplopia can occur. Pelly described peripheral prism glasses wherein high power prism segments are fitted unilaterally on the upper and lower peripheral parts of the spectacle lens. This design eliminates scotomas and diplopias and also provides a field expansion in the upper and lower parts of the field. In nystagmus. Yoked prisms may be used with the base away from the null point or preferred direction of gaze to correct abnormal head posture. And in some patients, nystagmus is suppressed when viewing a near target. Base out prisms stimulate fusional convergence, decrease the amplitude of nystagmus and thus improve visual acuity. Coming to some neurological conditions. Double prisms may be used in supranuclear palsies to allow the person to change directions and base in prisms in internuclear ophthalmoplegia to correct exodeviation and reduce diplopia in primary gaze. Patients with head or neck positioning problems such as patients with severe ankylosing spondylitis may benefit from prisms for example in patients with an orthopedic chin down posture Bilateral equal power base up yoked prisms can allow for improvement in straight ahead vision and thereby facilitate mobility. In bedridden patients, a base down prism may help move the image up such as a book or a TV to be able to see more comfortably. Prisms may also be useful in patients with advanced field defects such as in advanced glaucoma and uh, retinitis pigmentosa. A pseudophobia develops naturally in patients with macular loss and serves as a preferred retinal locus for perception of visual stimuli. Prisms may be used for image relocation to the preferred retinal locus. Prisms may also be classified based on the function that they perform. Neutralizing prisms are those whose power is equal to that measured on the prism and alternate cover test. Since they cause the image to fall on the fovea, there is no stimulus for fusional versions. Thus, since there is bifovial stimulation, they are prescribed for patients with absent fusion virgins ability but who are capable of sensory fusion. Relieving prisms are of lesser magnitude than that measured on the prism and alternate cover test. These patients have reduced but not absent fusional virgins and so this prism relieves some of the burden yet allows some virgins to take place. It is most commonly prescribed prisms for binocular vision disorders. Inverse or reverse prisms are oriented with the base toward the direction of the deviation unlike that of relieving prisms. They increase fusional demand and most commonly are used in orthoptic exercises to increase fusional virgins. They may also be used in eyes with poor vision to improve cosmesis as described earlier. Yoked prisms are a pair of prisms in front of both eyes with both their bases in the same direction. Yoked prisms are commonly used in incompetent strabismus including AV patterns, 
uh, abnormal head posture, nystagmus and homonymous hemianopia. Sector prisms are placed on only a portion of the spectacle lenses to provide prismatic effect for a particular distance or region only. They can either be neutralizing or relieving. Overcorrecting prisms are those whose magnitude is larger than the ocular deviation as measured by the prism and alternate cover test. They change the direction of deviation and their main use is in anomalous retinal correspondence. So that's it for today. If you like what you saw, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from AP's Ophthalmology Pearls. You may watch my other videos by clicking on the thumbnails. Please leave a note in the comment section if you wish for any particular topic to be covered in future. Look forward to regular updates. Thank you for watching.